Right, morning everyone. Thanks for coming to uh, hear me speak today. Uh, my name's Rob, and I'm going to be talking about solvage developments in the area of uh, BMI technology for high temperature applications. Uh, so first, a little brief introduction. So I'm uh, a member of our product development team working in the UK, and as part of my research, I look after our B BMI portfolio. For those who aren't familiar with Solvay, um, we're a science company um, founded back in 1863. So this year is actually our 160th anniversary that we're celebrating. Uh, and we're a very diverse company that bring technologies that uh, affect many aspects of life. So our solutions uh, are used in multiple different markets. So things such as homes, food, consumer goods, uh, smart devices, healthcare, electronics, water and air purification systems. And then lastly, in automotive and aerospace industry, which is where our materials sit. And so as our materials group within Solvay, we have a diverse portfolio of both composite materials and specialty engineered thermoplastics to meet a range of different applications. We can see a few numbers along the bottom of the slide kind of summarizing the state of the company last year. And one thing that we like to highlight is our focus on sustainability. Um, and that, that comes through our initiative known as Solvay One Planet where we're, we're really driving sustainability throughout our company. Uh, and that's based around three pillars, which are protecting the climate, preserving natural resources, and fostering better life. And you can see on the uh, orange dot there on the, on the screen that about 55% of our current sales come from solutions we would class as sustainable. So on to the topic that I really want to get into today. And this is bismol amide, or BMI resins, um, and the applications and where we see them going in the future. So for those who aren't familiar, BMI resins are high-performance matrix resins um, used in a range of composite applications. And the real drive and factor behind their application is the thermal performance. So when I say that, I'm talking about TG and thermal stability in particular. And you can see in this chart um, on the right on, of the slide, or left of the slide, um, really highlighting where they sit in the uh, matrix resin performance bracket. So at the bottom there, you've got your industrial epoxies and your polyesters. As you move up the temperature scale, you get to the your aerospace type, type epoxies and, and thermoplastics such as PEAK and PEC. And then really when you start pushing beyond the 130 degrees C uh, service temperature, that's when BMIs come into play. And then when you really want to go to extremes, you have to move on to things such as polyamide resins, which have their own challenges in terms of manufacturing and cost. So the key benefits of, of our BMI resins will uh, typically the thermal performance, as I've mentioned, and that's in terms of TG and thermal stability. And as well, there's, uh, with that, we get excellent mechanical performance. So this is high notch properties, such as open hole compression, and really good superior hot wet performance across a range of different uh, mechanical properties. Historically, there have been quite a few challenges with BMI resins that we've had to overcome. Uh, and these mainly relate to two areas of processing and of, of uh, toughness. So in terms of processing, BMIs would typically take uh, long cure cycles, which can be prohibitive for application. Uh, the handling of the material can be a challenge in terms of tack and drapeability. And then the resin flow is something that uh, needs to be looked at as well. Uh, these things are very low viscosity, which can bring challenges for processing into parts. On the toughness side, this kind of comes hand in hand with being a high temperature material, is that as you increase your TG and thermal stability, there tends to be a knock-on in terms of the toughness. So that's in terms of both compression strength after impact and micro-cracking resistance. So these are the historical challenges that uh, we've been able to overcome and, and offer BMI resins for application in the market today. So on this slide, we're looking at what currently Solvay offer. And we have a rich history in high temperature polymer matrix composites, um, having supplied them for I mean, 30 years plus. And so on the, the chart here on this slide is we're looking at slightly more in-depth version of the one on the last slide, comparing the performance of an epoxy, such as our Cycon 5320-1, uh, the BMI resins in the center there, so that's Cycon 5250-4 and the high temperature version, and a polyamide. Um, so Cycon 5250-4 is our flagship BMI resin, and this has been used across multiple platforms for nearly 30 years. So it's, it's well-liked and used in the industry. It's got proven pedigree, proven performance, and proven processing. Um, the key features of this resin include high service temperatures, as I've mentioned. So we're typically looking in the 150C plus range. And that comes with short excursions up to higher temperatures, uh, TG permitting. The high hot wet properties I already mentioned. And with this BMI, we, we get sufficient toughness for aerospace applications and good resistance to fluids and solvents. 
Um, another nice feature of our BMI resins is the um, shop life. These, are, these are, can be left on the bench for a month at a time. Uh, and versatile curing profiles enable tailorability of the performance that you get from the material. And, and the last point there is about processing. We do have RTM versions of our uh, Dash 4 resin. And this is still a go-to across the market for a range of applications. Then we've got this Icon 52-4 HT. And you'll notice that the only real change here is on that one to 100 hours bar. Um, what we've done with this resin is we're able to push the TG to higher levels, which really benefits those short-term excursions. But in terms of uh, long-term service at temperature, we're, we're in a similar ballpark to where we are with 52-4. And at the top, there's some data there for a polyamide, so that would be our Avamid S product. And you can see that this has really supreme thermal performance, but it does come with challenges in terms of processing. Uh, what's special about our BMIs is that we have some proprietary technology that enables our products to overcome those historical challenges that I mentioned on the last slide, particularly around the handling and tack of the material, uh, but also around the toughness. And it's worth bearing in mind that it's all well and good having these high temperature BMI materials, but you need to have this, the right products and tools and ancillary materials to be able to make parts from them. And that is something that Solvay is able to offer in terms of uh, tooling materials, adhesives and surfacing films, and I'll, I'll talk a bit on that a bit later. So what I really want to get into today is where, where are BMI's going, what's the future of these materials, what does the next generation look like, and what have we developed in Solvay that we'd like to talk about today. So this is a rather simplified chart, um, really just comparing two features of BMI. You could put multiple other properties on these axes, but uh, this, we feel that this gives a, a nice illustration uh, and tells the story quite nicely. So along the x-axis here, we've got continuous service temperature, and on the, the y-axis, we've got compression after impact, so a measure of toughness. Uh, you can see from what the epoxy with the arrows is that uh, epoxy wouldn't even get onto this chart generally in terms of continuous service temperature, uh, highlighting where the BMIs really come into their own. And here in this blue bubble is kind of where the current state of the art would sit. And generally what you see is as you try and improve your continuous service temperature, there will be some effect on toughness. So what I'd like to talk today is about two new design spaces we think we can offer up with our new technologies in this uh, space in terms of formulation and, and processing. Um, and so that's been, been represented here by two generic systems, XBMI1 and XBMI2. Well, I'll talk about the kinds of properties and things that we're able to do with these resins later on. So to start off with, we're, we're, we'll focus on this XBMI1 area. Um, so this is a next generation technology which is really aiming to push that continuous service temperature of these materials up and open up a new application space that we can't currently reach with, with BMI resins. Uh, so so I, like you can see on the, on the plot here, we're really trying to push up the, the x-axis without losing anything in terms of toughness or any other mechanical performance that we need from this material. The key features are summarized on, on this slide, so it's the thermal performance, but there's, there's extra benefits as well that we're able to bring with this technology. So things like the cure, cure flexibility and the rate of reaction, uh, the cure robustness, and the fact that even though we've managed to get these gains in uh, thermal performance and processing, we still have high compression strength after impacts and excellent notch properties that you'd associate with BMI resins. So really a use case for, for, for material in this design space would be something sort of around the engine components or commercial engines, this kind of thing. Um, so let's dig into a bit more detail about what I mean when I say um, these, these benefits on the slide here. So like I've already mentioned, thermal stability is really a driving factor behind the development of BMIs in this space. And what we're talking about in terms of thermal stability isn't just having a high TG. It's also about um, having resistance to thermal oxidation and resistance to thermal cycling and thermal shock. And so across this slide, you can kind of get a a feel for what I mean when I say these things. So in the table here, we, we've got an example of TG you might expect for this material. So a dry, a dry TG in a sort of 280 plus range and wet TGs about, well above uh, 200. And this we think means that we can offer continuous service temperatures above 180, pushing into the 200, 220, 230 uh, degrees Celsius to centigrade. What's particularly nice about this kind of technology is the thermal lock state of stability. And so that's in the light blue box here. And what we're doing here is comparing a current BMI solution with a next generation technology. And so in order to measure this, we basically take samples or coupons of the material and we age them in an air environment in an oven for at 200 degrees C for, as you can see on the slide here, up to 6,000 hours, so seven or eight months. 
And really, we, what we're monitoring here is the mass loss. So we, we weigh the samples and check for degradation by mass loss. With a current BMI, you can see that after 6,000 hours, we're up at about 3 weight percent mass loss. But with an XBMI one type technology, we can really bring that down to, a 0 point, to about 0.5 weight percent, so minimal mass loss over such a long uh, time range. And it's really bringing the performance of a BMI in line with a sort of polyamide type material. Finally, on this slide, we've got the uh, green box here, which is showing what is actually a rather boring picture. This is a micro section of a uh, quasi-isotropic laminate that's been subjected to thermal shock. So thermal shock is a very rapid temperature change. Um, and here we've been going from minus 55 degrees up to 200 degrees. And after 200 cycles, we've taken this picture on the right. Um, and, and the reason I say a boring picture is because there's nothing to see. And that's, that's good. So that kind of shows the microcracking resistance of this material. Uh, with other high temperature materials, you can have issues when you subject them for th to thermal shock that the uh, material will microcrack and, and basically uh, having an impact on mechanical performance. Whereas with this material, we're able to get that resistance to both thermal oxidative stability and thermal shock. So that's the uh, thermal attributes of our BMI. And now I'll move on a bit more to talk about the processing. And as I mentioned at the start, processing has historically been an issue for BMI. Um, and a, a typical cure cycle you might expect is shown on the slide here. So the uh, solid line is the, the time in the autoclave. And the dotted line would be a post cure, a freestanding post cure that you would subject the material after, to afterwards in order to really build up those high thermal and mechanical properties. And a typical, typical BMI cure cycle, we're looking in the region of 20 hours plus, so a six hour dwell in the autoclave followed by a six hour dwell at, at higher temperature. What we've been able to do with uh, XBMI one type materials is really optimize the resin chemistry to increase the reactivity. And uh, that enables us to offer shorten and cured cycles and make them more competitive and easier to work with. So as an example, if you were to stick with the freestanding post-cure route, we can reduce the dwells, temperature dwells for this material down to three hours in the autoclave. Um, and then those, the post-cure can also be reduced. What's nice about this BMI as well is that um, it's got good resistance to high temperature post-curing. So there's options to really push that post-cure temperature without negatively impacting the performance of the material. We also have multiple curing options. So we've also tested this material with a single shot autoclave cure cycle. So where you do the whole process in the autoclave and we're able to achieve cure times of sort of eight hours and below using a single shot process. Because it really enables us with this chemistry and technology to reduce the initial temperature as well. Um, and, and therefore reduce the time of the initial temperature as well. And therefore reduce that overall cure cycle. And these are just a couple of example cure cycles we could use this material. We have investigated the possibility of using a sort of two hours at 180 standard epoxy type cure. And we believe that our material is compatible. And then the last point there is about looking to the future away from the autoclave. What can we do with BMI in this space? And with this material, we've, we've done some initial trials into both VBO and press cure. And we think that there's definitely some um, op opportunities for improvement and use in these areas, thanks to the, the new chemistry we're looking at. The other point to talk about in terms of the cure is, is about robustness to cure. So it's, it's not just faster curing, it's more robust. And when I say that, what I mean is that we can tailor the cure cycle to what, to what suits best in terms of manufacturing the part without having a big knock-on effect in terms of the properties. And this is kind of exemplified by the plot in the green box, where we're looking at the variation in T, TG, or glass transition temperature, as a function of post-cure temperature. So each of these samples was post-cured uh, for, for three hours at the different cure temperature shown on the x-axis after an initial dwell in the autoclave. And, and what we see with a standard sort of BMI is that you can get a really wide range in, in TG and, and a knock-on on mechanical performance. So with the current BMI here, we're looking at a range of something like 230 all the way up to nearly 300 degrees C across that post-cure range of temperatures. But with our XBMI one type chemistry, we're able to really reduce that window, reduce the variation, and, and give us some robustness and confidence in the cure cycles we're using. And the, T, the change in TG is, as I mentioned, a reflection of the sort of mechanical performance you might see of the material. Uh, so to kind of prove it out a bit, we looked at how, does, how is toughness affected. So typically, toughness would be one of the, the key properties that you'd expect to change as your TG of material changes. And what we've got here is uh, some normalized data, but basically looking at 
two different post, post cure cycles. So you've got four hours at 2.30 and three hours at 2.50. And we say virtually no change in the compression after in, strength after impact, which enables us to say that we've, we've got stable thermal and mechanical properties under varied po cure and post cure conditions. So uh, what I've talked about on this slide is different post cures. But similarly, with the initial cure in the autoclave, you've got flexibility there. And we think this really offers processing options and, and makes the material easier to work with. Uh, the last point is around the gen general mechanical properties of this system. So as I've been talking about thermal stability and, and, and processing, I've not really mentioned much about mechanicals, but that's because the driver behind the development of this material wasn't to, to really push the envelope in terms of mechanical properties. But what was key is that we were able to maintain the performance of a, a standard BMI with these off benefits and offerings in terms of uh, cure flexibility and thermal stability. So this spider chart, again, it's not particularly exciting, but it's showing that with the XBMI line generally trending around 100% of the properties of the current BMI, we are maintaining the mechanical performance in terms of some key properties such as uh, open hole compression, uh, open hole tension, and, and compression strength after impact. The one area where we do start to see these benefits of, of the material is when we, we push the, the material to higher temperatures. So you'll notice that the 230 degrees C hot wet open hole compression, we're, we're really seeing a benefit of over 50% improvement on the uh, legacy systems. So that's a, a, a quick tour through X, the XBMI1 design space. And now I'm going to move on to the, the second type of material. So here, rather than trying to push the thermal performance of the material, this is really trying to push up that toughness of BMI. So as I mentioned, historically, this has been a challenge, but it's something that we're addressing uh, with, a, with some new technologies that we've, we've developed, uh, which can help us basically move up that y-axis on this chart here, as exemplified by the SBMI2 bubble. And alongside the increase in toughness for this, this, this type of system is we can also have opportunities for controlling the flow of the resin. So again, this is something I mentioned at the start where uh, the viscos low viscosity of BMI resins can prove challenging. With this technology, we're able to bring that more in line with what people might be expected to see more conventionally for an epoxy. Um, to make them easier to process, basically. And this kind of BMI that would sit in this design space uh, is generally suited for an application where high temperature is needed, but it's also where damage tolerance is needed. So maybe something like supersonic transport or, or things like this. So this slide basically goes into a, a bit more detail about um, those two main points that I was talking about on the last slide. So we've got... Uh, Two boxes here, one talking about the toughness and one talking about viscosity. So if we, if we look at toughness and we compare like for like on an intermediate modulus fiber, we see that we can get a, an improvement of around 50% compared to uh, the current state of the art. Um, and this comes hand in hand with an improvement in processing. So rather than t talking about the, the faster cure times, this is more about the flow of the, of the resin. So on this plot here, you can see viscosity of um, I've added an epoxy as well for reference, but the epoxy, so looking at a current BMI, you can basically see, compared to the epoxy, the much lower viscosities that you reach, um, which gives challenges, can give challenges for processing. And the epoxy line is an order of magnitude higher. With, it, with this XBMI2 type technology, we're able to control the flow and bring it more in line with an epoxy into that same sort of uh, magnitude sort of area. And this really will help um, facilitate processing moving forward. I mentioned at the start as well that Solvay is able to offer the full suite of BMI um, products to go with these, these novel materials. And everything I talk about on this slide is compatible with both our current state of the art and future proofed ready for these new developments that are in the pipeline. So um, when I talk about complementary products, um, I've got on this slide an adhesive and a surfacing film. So. Uh, FM450-1 is our high temperature BMI film adhesive. This is a legacy product that is uh, currently on a range of different programs. And it, it possesses a unique combination of, of TG, toughness, and shear properties that make it work really well as a, a bonding solution for uh, BMI materials. And that comes in hand in hand with that temperature capability of 200 degrees C plus. So it, it can work with our current state of the art, our 5250-4, but also with these new technologies that are pushing into higher and higher um, thermal domains. And it, with this BMI, it's suitable for both monolithic and sandwich structures. 
Um, and there's some example data here kind of showing the, the performance you might expect at different temperatures. In terms of a surfacing film, this one is a development project product, uh, SMX2000. Um, and this is really because we, we noticed an unmet need in the market in the BMI space is that for epoxies, we have a, a, a large range of surfacing films and options. But for BMI, there's not really anything out there. And you're kind of, at the moment, forced to go down and use an epoxy, which doesn't necessarily have the thermal performance you need for your application. So we really think that SMX2000 fills an unmet need for aerospace OEMs because it, it's a BMI based and has that temperature capability of 180 degrees C plus. And, and we can include with that some lightning strike protection for applications where that might be needed. So in the table here, you've basically got a, a very generic comparison to an epoxy surfacing film. Um, but you're, we're able to offer these, these key features of, of, that you would expect from a surfacing film. So a paint ready surface, the lightning strike protection and, and the low weight. But we've been able to add that temperature performance and the uh, fact that this is optimized for co-curing with, with BMI resins. So that kind of brings an end to the stuff I wanted to talk about today. Um, this slide is basically summarizing the, the aspects that we think we can bring for the next generation of BMI technology. So things that I've talked about today would include thermal stability, mechanical performance, high TGs, excellent cure robustness and reduced cycle times, the ability to control flow, and then that microcrack resistance to the material as well. So in summary, Solvay are, are continuing to push the envelope in terms of what's possible with high temperature resin systems for polymer matrix composites. So that's uh, all I had to talk about today, but we're really keen to hear from people um, who are interested in these types of materials. We'd like to discuss more. So if you do want to come talk to me about high temperature materials, please do come find uh, me at the, at the Solvay stand where the, any of our team will be able to help. And I've, I've got Sam's details here as well. So please do come and uh, let us know if you'd like to discuss and learn a bit more about what we're, what we're working on. Uh, that brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you everyone for coming out to listen. I do have three minutes if anyone would like to ask a question. Otherwise, thanks for, thanks for coming. All right, I'll take that as a name. Thanks, everyone.